What's going on guys? Welcome back to another hunting boot camp. Today I'm going to cover a very controversial topic within the waterfowling community, whether or not to shoot hens. Now we've all heard the main reason against shooting hens. Dead hens don't lay eggs. And they are correct. Dead hens do in fact not lay eggs. Just doesn't happen. But there's a lot more to the story than just that. It's common to go on forums and Facebook groups and other social media where hunters congregate and you'll see someone put out simple math problems to try to prove their logic. Something like, uh, say you shoot one hen, it would have raised 12 ducklings, and that's a fairly typical clutch size depending on the species of duck. Half of those would be hens, which would have 12 more ducklings the next year, and so on and so forth. You know, it keeps going on. So shooting that one hen killed a potential 78 ducks, not including the original hen, or more that could have been around in the next two years. Now that is a typical problem that they present to you while you're you know, in an argument or a debate about this very topic. Now there are a couple problems with this train of thought. One is that it assumes that there is no mortality to any of the offspring or the hen itself. There's a reason there's higher proportion of drakes to hens, that being due to hen mortality rates while nesting and brood rearing. But ultimately the main problem with this train of thought is that it simply focuses on the individual, not the population. When wildlife biologists are making plans, making bag limits, doing pretty much anything, they're looking at the species as a population. Mortality from hunting is a drop in the bucket in the grand scheme of things. The big drivers of waterfowl population, two things, habitat and nesting conditions. Those are the two big drivers of waterfowl populations. But don't just take my word for it. Here's an excerpt from a Ducks Unlimited article on the 2019 waterfowl survey. And quote, overall, both total ponds and total populations of breeding waterfowl in the prairie pothole region were down slightly. However, important breeding areas in Southern Alberta and Saskatchewan were much drier than last year, which contributes to reduced numbers of breeding waterfowl observed in the survey, end quote. In other words, when breeding habitat is drier, there's less ducks. More habitat over a bigger area allows for increased opportunities and places for duck to nest in poor conditions. A look at duck population numbers, and you guys can check this out, and I'm going to put all my sources down below in the description so you can go and check it out if you don't believe me on any of this. But a look at duck population numbers will show they generally follow the same pattern as good water conditions on nesting habitat. Now I know what you're thinking. One, at having more hens with favorable habitat and nesting conditions only lead to more ducks? For that answer, I'll refer to this excerpt from a Wildfowl Magazine article titled, Dead Hens Don't Lay Eggs. It says, quote, Dr. Jim Sedinger, a professor of wildlife ecology at the University of Nevada, Reno, examined duck harvest and its impact on overall populations and found no correlation between harvest rates and duck survival rates. He did, however, find that the higher the overall population of ducks, the lower the survival rate. Harvest, in other words, is compensatory, not additive, which means that those ducks, or the subset of ducks, killed by hunters, would have died anyways. Hunting mortality is not added to the other mortality factors. End of quote. Now there's also reasons why guys may choose to shoot hens. Usually there's something like, it was a slow day or it's called duck hunting, not drake hunting, or they all taste the same, or they banned hens too. Now, those aren't actually really good reasons, but a guest on the Duck Gun podcast a few months back actually had another reason I hadn't thought of. He says he shoots them so they can't educate more birds. And when you think about it, it makes a ton of sense. How many decoy spreads do those hens see every year and then lead the flock away from yours late in the season. You know, they're coming in with all them drakes and the drakes are dropping left and right around them and those hens fly off. And they know what that decoy spread looks like. They've seen those spinners, they've seen the U pattern, the J hook, whatever you're using. Those birds are educated. Now granted, this is purely anecdotal evidence, but it's definitely some good food for thought. Now back to the original question. Should you shoot hens or not? In the end, it truly doesn't matter. Now, I'm not advocating going out and shooting limits of brown. That's not what I'm saying. Do not misinterpret what this video is. Do not misinterpret my words. Most hunters will continue to show restraint behind the trigger when brown is cupping into their spread. And that's great. You know, that is great. And some will, some will pull the trigger. Some will shoot that hint. And that's okay too. 
The ultimate goal of this video is to simply show those that feel the need to chastise those with brown in their bag that they need to lay off and do some actual research to substantiate their beliefs. And I'm also going to add that those that feel the need to chastise people for shooting hens other than in a joking manner. You know, it's all fun and good to call your buddy a hen shooter just, you know, jokingly. But there's people that get really heated over it. And to those people, I say this, if you are shooting geese or black ducks or early teal, you do not have a leg to stand on. Because guess what? You are shooting females out of those populations. But I digress. Hunters are being attacked from all sides, guys. It's happening. We've got, we've got no end of different threats that could end this, this pastime, this tradition, this, this way of life that we all hold dear. It, you know, we have to come together. We have to speak with one voice. We have to do things the right way. We have to show people, you know, just how great of stewards of the land we can be. You know, and that's that's a big reason why I do these videos is to promote hunting, is to get new people interested, is to help provide uh, conservation funding so we can have more habitat and protect those wild areas and protect these natural resources that we all hold so dear. Because if we don't, they'll disappear. Hunters are a driving force of conservation. And so we need to stop attacking each other and come together as a community as hunters, as fishermen, as outdoorsmen, as sportsmen. We need to come together. But that is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll catch you out there, guys. See ya.